All right, welcome back. Our statement today reads, a dipole P is a distance R from a point charge Q and oriented so that P makes an angle theta with the vector R from Q to P. A, what is the force on P? B, what is the force on Q? Things to know for this problem. The force and the electric field of a point charge and a dipole. For the solution, let's first consider what the force of Q on P is. This can be given by F equals P dot the del operator times the electric field of a point charge. Mathematically, let's break down what this dot product is. We have the dipole term P and all its components times the del operator, which is just the partial derivatives in all the spatial dimensions, and then we multiply that into the E field, which is found by Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R over R cubed. Remember that we had the unit vector before where R hat is equal to the vector R divided by the magnitude of R. So that's how we get R and R cubed. We can see that on the no page. All right, so we see that we have a dot product which can be executed and simplified to px times dx and so forth. But we need to modify the language of which the E field is written in. Here we see that the vector r is x, y, z in the x hat, y hat, and z hat direction respectfully. Uh, the shorthand notation which is seen here is the angle brackets, because I don't feel like writing the unit vectors. Uh, but then also let's note that the vector r is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus c squared, the typical distance formula. But we have three of them to account for, so that's why we have a cube there. And then algebraically that simplifies down to uh, what we see in the last line after we factored out q over 4 by epsilon naught and put the denominator in terms of a fractional exponent. Now the force is a vector equation, so it'll help us to understand what's going on if we take things one component at a time, starting with the x component. So we're only worried about the x hat direction here, which it has a magnitude of x, which we see in the red text. Now, we, now all that's left is to distribute that and uh, execute all the partial derivatives. Since we have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator, the partial derivative is actually a product rule of these things, and that's why we have two terms in the bracket for the dx uh, derivative. But the second term in the bracket is similar amongst all the other components, y and z. You see that the twos cancel in all of them, and we just have a staple, the red x in front. Uh, so let's simplify this down. In the next line, we see that we uh, substitute it back in the definition for the magnitude of r, simply to clean it up and we could see everything at once. Then we distribute the uh, components of the dipole, so px, py, and pz, into the next line. And uh, from here, we'll see how this simplifies down. So every term except that first term in the parentheses has a factor of negative 3x over r to the fifth. Once we factor that out, we see that we're left with an expression in the bracket that looks very familiar. In the next line, along with factoring out a factor of 1 over r cubed, we note that we can write that expression in the bracket as a dot product. This is a dot product of the dipole moment with the vector r. From here, it's easy to extrapolate to the other components, for the other components yield analogous results. We see that for f sub y, we have everything the same except now it's a p sub y minus 3y over r squared and similarly for z which we can see here so now we need to recombine these independent results into the vector form of the force itself which we see here uh, note that the dipole moment components p x p y p z get added together in a vector and then we uh, factored out the x y and z magnitudes from the second part of that uh, simplification into the red vector form you see there. Instead of keeping these in the angle brackets, we simply write them in the vectorial form with the bold face letter. Um, but you see that we have a factor of uh, 1 over r squared out front of the brackets containing the dot product. So we distribute those to the r vectors themselves in order to write the r vectors as r hats. 
Thus, we see the force there. Now, for the force of P onto Q, we note that we can simply use F equal QE, where E is the field of the dipole. We can plug the field of the dipole in, but we need to note that the r hat directions are pointing towards P, and therefore we have a negative sign attached to them. Thankfully for us, there's two negatives and they cancel out. So now we can move forward in the simplification and we see that we have a force there. But note that the forces are equal and opposite, which is what we'd expect from Newton's third law.